Welcome to Digital Asset News, take your top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we got some interesting stuff and it's a continuation from the stories we followed up on yesterday. So first up, PayPal stock shoots to a record high after introducing cryptocurrencies to the platform. And we covered this yesterday where we talked about PayPal adding cryptocurrency digital assets, but there is a ripple effect for what is going on with PayPal. On top of that, there's questions that need to be answered, such as are exchanges going to be affected massively by this? Will merchants actually get paid in cryptocurrencies? And where is PayPal buying their cryptocurrencies and digital assets actually from? Also, on the heels of the presidential debate for tonight, we got a great article where it talks about Bitcoin proponents bemoan or do not like Joe Biden's proposed capital gains hike. And I'm going to explain why there's no need to be afraid of what is happening in the presidential race, what is happening with legislature, what is happening with regulation, as long as you are proactive versus reactive. And before we get into that, I want to make a huge announcement on this channel. I am very leery about doing any promotions. I must get between 20 and 30 suggestions every week from crazy exchanges out there to some ICO crazy coin from nowhere stand. So to date, I have only had one other promotion on this channel, which was CryptoTrader.tax, and I love them. I encourage everyone to check them out. Their link is in the description below. But today is historic as we welcome in our second sponsored video, and it is from iTrust Capital. I've been talking about iTrust Capital for months, and we finally ironed out a deal. So I am very proud and happy to have them in as today's sponsor. And this is going to go hand in hand with the article we just talked about with Biden and his tax proposal. So if you're interested in not paying taxes, uh, stick around. But before we do all that great stuff, let's take a look at what's going on the market. And it is a fantastic day. Look, Bitcoin is at 13,000. So it broke open the trend. I'm really happy about that, as I'm sure most people are. We're up 2.3% in 24 hour time period, 14% for the week. And that is massive. Ethereum up 6% to 417. We might be nearing that 450 mark, and that is great news for everybody. 10% for the week. Wow. Tether's up 0.3%. Nobody cares. XRP is actually up 3.7% uh, just on the news of PayPal. But the question really came out, which is why did PayPal choose Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin, and just totally leapfrogged XRP? Interesting. Let me know what you think in the comment section. That should be a hot topic. Chainlink up 12% uh, in one day, 12.1 for the week, and at $12.27. And remember, Chainlink, uh, I think its all time high was around 1819. Double check me in the comment section. So we'll see if Chainlink can actually uh, meet or extend past that over this nice little mini bull run. Binance kind of 2.5. Polkadot 4.4, Litecoin 4.8, which I thought there'd be a much bigger pump for Litecoin as they are one of the four that PayPal has agreed to list on their platform. So hmm, interesting. Cardano's up. Everybody's up. Everybody, let's see who's down. Crypto.com again down 30% for the week. I know some people talk about, I don't know why people are spreading FUD about Crypto.com. Well, there's got to be a reason because it's down 30% almost. Tron up by 1.4. Tez is up 3.6. Everything is up. What's down? Well, OKB, the token for OKX, but that's just because of their horrible policies that they have set in place for uh, the founder to be the only one that, that holds the private key. Yeah, fantastic idea. VeChain up 8.7. Good for all you VeChain holders like myself. Theta is up 1.8. I just did a live stream today. I usually do it at 11 a.m. to about noon, uh, 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So if you got time, check me out on Theta. A lot of good interaction, a lot of good questions, and uh, try to answer the best I can. Uniswap up 4.2, and uh, someone had made a mention like, "Hey, Uniswap's down majorly. Why don't you, you know, talk about your mistakes?" If I talked about my mistakes all day long or on this channel, uh, we would never get anything done. <laughs> There's a ton of mistakes I make. So on Uniswap, I did say it would go up, but I didn't say it would like go up every single day. So remember, we are in cryptocurrency digital assets. So uh, just be patient. If you don't like the price, just stick around for 30 minutes. It'll change. Maker up 4.9. OMG, everything's up. They may that's uh, they may go. Wow, hey, Celsius network up 12 and a half percent. Holy smokes! But they are down uh, 1.8 over the seven day period. So at a dollar 28. So congratulations to Celsius, one of my faves. And Ave finally breaks through up 8 percent to 38 dollars. I like to see that. Uh, yearn, whatever. And that's it. So I'm not going to dwell too much on this. Looks like it's a pretty good day. Let's take the W and uh, go on to our first topic. So first up, 
PayPal stock shoots the record high after introducing crypto to the platform. And of course, everybody's been talking about this. We even talked about this yesterday on the channel, but there's some lingering questions that I think we need to answer. So PayPal Holdings plans to allow customers to buy crypto through their accounts and use cryptocurrency for merchant payments, a move that helped power its stock to a record high in Wednesday trading. And I can tell you right now, I will definitely be putting this on my websites to take payments because this is fantastic. However, as far as customers like me and you being able to buy and hold and sell crypto, uh, this is going to be rolled out uh, in the coming weeks in the United States. I actually reached out to PayPal to ask if it was uh, live right now and the rep said no. Uh, of course, I did the same thing with uh, my USAA bank when I had this the same issue come up about, hey, are you going to actually integrate with Coinbase? I'm like, we don't know what you're talking about. And of course, it was been, had been integrated for like a year. But uh, maybe that's just how customer services is. I don't know. But the big news here is that you have to understand why it's big. It's big because not because I'm a big fan of PayPal. I could care less if they make a bunch of money. But their stock price went from 210 all-time high to 213, just an announcement of crypto and digital assets. Why is this important? Well, it's important because the different companies that are looking at what is going on, they're looking at Michael Saylor, MicroStrategy, they're looking at Square and Jack Dorsey, they're looking at NYDIG or the other one that uh, purchased 110 million uh, worth of uh, Bitcoin. It wasn't NYDIG, they're actually holding it. And all the rest of the people that are already in there, Fidelity Digital Assets and Ameritrade and Paltier Jones, and they're looking at PayPal and they're thinking to themselves, hmm, Maybe there is something to this cryptocurrency digital assets. Maybe Jamie Dimon doesn't know what he's talking about. Maybe the reluctance of the governments to get in and provide regulation isn't something to be feared, but something to look as an asset. Maybe these things are actually something that you get into now and be in the beginning as opposed to being in late. Again, nobody wants to be first, but I guarantee no one wants to be last. So this is huge for companies looking from the outside in going, you know what, if this is the big push and this is what is happening to the different stocks uh we should look into it when paypal had announced they were actually you know dipping their toes in the water and looking at it, at it i was like why wouldn't they do it i mean paypal and jack dorsey i mean half of their revenue is generated from bitcoin through the cash app so if you're looking at it as, as a payment processor uh why wouldn't you look at this and go you know what you're telling me that we can essentially double what we do just by offering this crazy cryptocurrency? Well, I guess so. Well, of course you're going to do it because that's the bottom line and you have to, you are beholden to your shareholders. So of course you're going to do it. And that's why PayPal is involved. Not because they believe in cryptocurrency digital assets. No one, no one is foolish enough to believe that. They believe in making money and they know they're going to make a lot of it. So again, if you got a big company like this, how many, how many big companies are right on their heels? How many mid-sized companies right on their heels going, you know what, we should get into that. Uh, I think this is the beginning. I think it could be huge, uh, but there are some lingering questions we need to answer. So moving on, starting early next year, PayPal users will be able to use crypto to pay for goods or services from merchants who accept PayPal. And there's a lot of them. You're looking at around 360 million active users for PayPal, roughly 220 billion in transactions in the last quarter, the last quarter. So I think this could be uh, pretty darn big and uh, we'll just play it by ear. To continue on, consumers will be able to instantly convert their selected cryptocurrency balance to fiat currency. Let me read that again. Consumers, consumers will be able to instantly convert their selected cryptocurrency balance, balance to fiat with certainty of value and no incremental fees. So the question is, can consumers and also can merchants just keep their balance in cryptocurrency for whatever they buy? I would think yes, as far as like a consumer, but for a merchant, if I'm going to get paid in cryptocurrency, I want to keep cryptocurrency. I don't want to convert it over to fiat. Money's on fire. Uh, do you want me just to lose money? So Hopefully that'll be the case. But then the next question is incremental fees. It's very interesting because uh, for every transaction uh, for PayPal, it's usually 2.9, 2.99% plus 30 cents per transaction. So the question then is, is that's what's going to happen uh, when people are transferring back and forth? If it is, uh, look for PayPal to make a massive amount of money, even more so than uh, Coinbase. Anyhow, it states that PayPal argued that this move will significantly increase cryptocurrencies utility well of course they want to say that because they want everybody to go on so we'll see so now it comes out of the questions and the questions that i have is does this actually do anything for cryptocurrency digital asset in our market in our field is it is it positive or negative and i think it's a little bit of both and i'm going to tell you why 
because positively, obviously, you know, people are going to be exposed to it. How many people have their crypto or their uh, PayPal app? And it is, you know, when they look at it, like, oh, I can pay in fiat. What's this? Bitcoin. I heard of Bitcoin. Uh, it used to be a lot of money and now it's, oh, it's on the way up. Well, what's going on? Maybe I should invest into that. Ethereum, I don't really know what that is, but may, maybe I can look it up. Uh, I don't know what Bitcoin cash is. That sounds cool. And then also uh, Litecoin, I have no idea what that is. So, I mean, when people are exposed to it more and more and more and they see these things happening, then again, they get more interested into it. So I think just for us, I mean, obviously it's a slam dunk, but there's another, there's a flip side to that. I think that it also becomes a negative and I'm going to tell you why, because when people get into, into Bitcoin, they don't really know about it and they start to invest into it. What happens when we see a slippage? What I'm not slippage, but you know what I mean? When we see like an, an, a reduction in the actual percentage of the value of Bitcoin, it goes from, you know, so let's say 13,000 people buy it and they really get heavy into it because they're so excited about it. They don't really know that, uh, hey, this market is super volatile. And then they're like, whoa, I just lost a thousand bucks. What the heck is going on? That's what happened in 2017. So I see this part of it as very negative. Plus, when they look at it like, well, hold on, I know about Bitcoin, but what does Ethereum really do? And they look it up and there's, you know, they, they him and haw over it. So not a big thing. And then here's another, another problem I see is that when you have Ethereum and you don't really realize what it's for, you just know it's like, it's kind of like when, when, when retail gets in there, look at it like, oh, this is just like a stock. I'm just going to buy it like a stock because it's going to go up in value. But they don't understand the whole ramification. They don't understand like ETH 2.0 is coming. They don't really know about decentralized finance. They don't know anything about smart contracts. And here's another caveat. Who's going to get the staking rewards? Because if we can't take cryptocurrency off of PayPal, which that's not going to be offered that I know of, then who's going to get the staking rewards? I can tell you who it is. It's going to be PayPal. So when they look at that, they're like, well, that's kind of a dirty thing if they ever figure it out. And hopefully they can. Hopefully they can find a channel uh, like this or the awesome channel over at uh, Crazy for Cryptos or Coin Bureau or Crypto Nobs or Alex Maschioli or Unchained or any ones that I listen to all the time. If they don't find those places, what's going to happen? And I think it's going to be a little bit of a, a negative uh, as time goes on. However, it is good for the average retail investor who's like, hey, I ain't got, I don't have time. I got 10 kids running around. I got three jobs. I got uh, four side jobs. I'm trying to have a social life. I'll just put some money in and that's it. So that's good, I suppose. But I think for the ones that really want to learn and know, there hopefully there's resources out there, but uh, we will see. And the next one I had to think about is, well, how are the exchanges going to be affected? Not that I'm like really crying over the exchanges and, you know, oh, what's going to happen to these billion dollar companies? I, I think about it and I think, well, are they going to be shut down? Because, I mean, everybody's going to go to PayPal. But I thought, I'm like, that's that was stupid, Rob. It's dumb. Because people like us, me and you right now, we're not going to PayPal. Let's just be honest. We're not going to pay those fees because we know that we can shop around and get some good fees. We also know that if it's not your uh, not your keys, it's not your coins or not your crypto. So we know that uh, PayPal is a non-starter for us. So where are we going to go? We're going to keep going to the same exchanges that we do to right now. We're also going to go to these things called decentralized exchanges, which I guarantee these new people have no idea what that is. Or will they ever, uh, or for a while at least. So they're not going to lose us. And then as people start to get into it, and then they start to realize what this is all about. Oh, well, Bitcoin is good because of the quantitative easing. It's actually quantitative hardening. Oh, it's censorship resistant. It means no one can take it. Oh, it's divisible and I can you know, buy a certain amount of shares. Oh, it's actually better than gold and I can send it to anybody anywhere in the world uh, in under 30 minutes. So I think once they start to realize it, then it'll be big. Just right now, I think there's gonna be a problem. Um, and as far as exchanges go, I think they're all going to actually do very well because once people realize what it is, then they're going to find the other exchanges and off they go. So I think the crappy exchanges that are really not doing so hot right now anyhow because they have poor liquidity, they're going to go away anyhow. But that's just how the free market works. And the last two is, you know, who who is PayPal purchasing the crypto from? I've reached out and uh, nobody seems to know right now. So uh, once I figure that out, I'll let you know. But I will just say that I believe it's probably like an OTC type of situation just like MicroStrategy did. And in case you don't know, MicroStrategy, of course, they bought $430 million worth of Bitcoin just a couple weeks ago. And the reason or the way they were able to do it without massively pushing the price up is they had a team of people that would actually go out and buy Bitcoin every three to five seconds. And it wasn't like, I need 100 Bitcoin. It's like, I need 0.1 Bitcoin. I need 0 0.08 Bitcoin. And they did that all day long, all night long for weeks and weeks. And it didn't move the price at all. I mean, very, very little. But now that they did it, 
I think the cat's out the bag and these other companies are like, I want to do the same thing too. No, not so fast, Charlie, because guess what? There's only so much Bitcoin to go around and people like me, I'm not selling. I think you, you ain't selling either because you know exactly what's going to happen. So we're going to hold on and we're going to have that Kung Fu grip. So good luck getting this Bitcoin out of my cold hands. It's not going to happen. And then, of course, the last one I talked about, will merchants be able to keep their crypto or will be converted to fiat? Again, not for sure about that one. But uh, if it's if it's my choice, I'm keeping it in crypto because uh, money's on fire. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.